Hey kids, welcome to another Drum Emporium. Uh, we're down in my little dungeon. It is a dungeon. It's in uh, half my basement, which is kind of a... right grazes the top of my head for the beams. The other side is a full recording studio, but this side... This side is basically where I do everything Glen, where it's restoring drums, building model cars, um, practicing drums, um, doing uh, videos like this for uh, demos and stuff. I do some of those in the studio too, but anyways, today we're talking about uh, a recent purchase of an electronic kit. And I don't know if I did one on my original uh, electronic kit. Um, people always ask me, it's like, well, how do I afford all this stuff? I said, I don't pay a lot for this stuff. I find the deals. you got to look for the deals. Uh, the one I'm going to show you is uh, the Roland TD-8. And uh, this is an old model. Um, I'm going to guess. I don't know much about electronics. I'll be totally honest. Um, this one, I, it's maybe uh, 20 years old, 15, 20 years old. Um, a lot of people still like this particular module. I, I really actually love it, even though I'm really not a fan of electronic drums. Um, I just needed something uh, to practice with late at night because I'm basically an insomniac. I, I've always just slept four hours a day, or at night, I should say, late at night. But um, I'll be practicing and writing songs until four in the morning. So I just can't sleep early, never could, even in school. So this is super easy um, to operate and it's got some pretty decent sounds. I found one that I like. All I need is one. I'm not doing it for anything else but um, just learning stuff at night. You know, drums. Um, I got the original pedal for this and it's so big and clunky. Uh, this is a set, an aftermarket one that uh, I got. I forgot for 20 bucks or whatever and cleaned it all up and just sanded the pedal to make it look pretty. Um, to be honest, it's, uh, I found this in a pawn shop. I think I paid, uh, I, I'm going to guess because it's been a while, but I think 180 bucks maybe. It was in a box. It didn't come with any rack. Um, the bass drum, um, needed legs, so I put legs on it. I ended up finding legs after for it, but... I kind of like the legs I put on it. They're from an old Tama drum set. But it works great. The pedal is didn't come with it. That's one of my Campcos. Um, but, yeah, so all these pads came with it. And the bass drum. The module. No cables. And I can't remember if one of these came. I don't think so. These are mine from for my Pad 11, if I remember right. I roll on pad 11. Uh, there was a black pad, a simple black pad. I don't know what I did with it. It's hiding in a box somewhere um, that I didn't use. Um, as for the symbols, as for the symbols, these I made. These are cheap 14 inch hi hats. I. Uh, Glued rubber on them. That's kind of rubber you get at the dollar store that you put under glasses and things on your table so they don't slide. And I made triggers for it. I did a whole video on that. You can watch that on my channel. But these have worked great. And I just drilled a couple of holes and glued the uh, the trigger under underneath. You're never going to hit it anyways. And they work fantastic. No problems. So that's my hi-hat with this pedal. It's kind of a combination thing. i really not a fan of this. And the foot pedal is inconsistent. Um, the other one was worse. Um, so I eventually wanted to get uh, a regular triggered hi-hat that's functional with my foot. 
Um, that's my ride symbol. This is a crash. And this is a kind of a china or another crash. I think I have it set up that the rim is uh, china and then the crash is here or vice versa. And I set it up to be kind of like my live playing. I like single tom and usually play f like just a four piece, but I do play five as you can see the big kit over here. It's usually got one tom double floor. This is more stuff on that kit too, but um, I have uh, no problem with uh, playing the kit except uh, I really not crazy about the eight inch snare drum. Um, I was, you know, gonna make a snare and make one bigger and stuff. I mean, it's great for prox and it's good enough for that. But I'm still farting around with the sounds in this and I'd like to get the rim shot better to kind of make it, I have it set up right now as a cross stick sound um, for doing the country music because I use it the odd time to practice with my country band. I'm in a rock band too, but yeah, so uh, no qualms about this TD-8. I love this thing. Um, uh, I mean, the pads, everything doesn't feel like a real drum set. It just does not, okay? So it's good for practicing and learning your songs and keeping your hands in shape. But I find as soon as I go on a drum set, uh, the feel is so different. I don't think it'll ever capture the feel of real drums, but who knows? Uh, cymbals, definitely not. not. They're not even close uh, yet. But the thing is, you can trigger, you can run this into your computer and trigger real sounds. But if I got to go through all that, I'm just going to play a real drum set. I'm being honest. Like, why go all through all the bullshit? Okay, I understand if you're in an apartment stuff and it's like you want better sound. Knock yourself out. But these kits, brand new, are not cheap. I've seen this kit going with the rack, which if the rack isn't much. I prefer it on the actual cymbal stands because at least you can, you don't have the rack getting in the way of any of your setup. You can just move it around. Right now, this is like one cymbal stand, another cymbal stand. Everything is on two stands. Just with cheapy, cheapy multi clamps that I, again, bought used that were so dirty that I just buffed them up on a buffing machine in my garage and, and now they look all spiffy. But I, I can't justify the cost of these new. Uh, I think it's insane, really. Uh, but even the used ones are going for big bucks. I've seen this kit going for over a thousand bucks. I don't know why, but uh, I guess I'm missing something that other people know. So anyways, new to the edition, I just picked this up off a friend. Um, that is a Roland uh, D T or T D twenty five K. So it came exactly with everything you see there. I don't know what that one little extra bar is there. It's bought it off a friend. They weren't using it. it was sitting in storage and it had lots of dust on it. Um, they were, I mean, they were living in an apartment too, but, uh, and he's just a, a hobbyist drummer, but I believe this was, uh, the sons in the family and he just never used it. So the kit is pretty mint. Once I cleaned the dust off it, it just like, holy smoke, this thing is like mint. Um, so <laughs> it was kind of funny when I was buying it, uh, we were going, well, I think we're missing something here. When I got home, it's like couple things so we got those figured out they were still in storage so so it's all there it's all working it's all cleans um, I'm gonna move over there in one sec uh, back to this one here the module is great I actually like this module better it's nice big buttons uh, easy to read and I really like this for you know bringing up and down the individual volumes like if I want the snare a little louder, or the cymbals, or the hi-hat, or the kick drum. It's so easy just to do a slider in real time. Um, so this wins, even though it's old, this wins for a lot of things uh, to do with this module. I really do like this module. Um, where it loses, the hi-hat, definitely. 
uh, which is one of the reasons why I bought that. My friend sent me a picture. It had the electronic hi-hat. I said, okay, let's talk price. So, Oh, this one I didn't have cables for. I had to make my own cables. So my cables are actually are better quality than the Roland ones that come factory with it. They're heavy duty. Um, yeah, um, I like the feel of the pads. It's easy to adjust, fun to play. And when I got a, to uh, vacuum down here, I just grab that stand, grab that stand, the bass drum I just unplug, and I move the two stands. The whole kit is on these two stands, except for the two foot paddles. And it's so easy, everything's labeled. Buy a labeler. You won't regret it, especially with cables. So this kit has lots of pluses. Uh, the minus, I don't like the hi-hat thing, although it works. And I probably just didn't spend enough time on it. But um, I'm not getting rid of this. I still like it. Um, so, I don't know. Um, and then some of the sounds are pretty pretty bad. But I did find a really good one. Um, I also bought it for... Uh, running MIDI into my special software in my recording studio so I can record all the drum tracks and it actually transcribes what I play and then I can print out uh, what I play in sheet music form. Gotta love that. Okay, so over to this one. This looks a little more like a Rolls Royce. It's a little bit cleaner. I love the black rack. And uh, the rubber symbols take some getting used to. Um, I'm going to put another one here. It's going to be a crash. I'm going to build one just like that. I have an old kick drum trigger there. And I also have a rubber pad. A bit bigger than that. But I'm going to make a, a symbol like this with the trigger from what either that or the the other oddball one well, pad so this module kind of boring looking um, the adjustments are pretty good I'm still playing around with it I did some recording on here just to see because uh, uh, the other one you can't use a can't really record I don't think because it doesn't have a USB drive slot like this it has the old style and I haven't really tried recording with the other one except MIDI running MIDI into my computer and it works fine that way. This one has the same features as MIDI but this one um, has USB so I just went through a bunch of sounds, did a couple of sample drum grooves and noise and see how it records onto uh, my thumb drive and hopefully it didn't wipe out what I had on it. Uh, this was missing three buttons. They come off really easy on this unit. That's why I like the other unit better. It's more push button with only three knobs, I think. But these come off really easy. So I had a few of these off an old mixer and they actually fit. So good enough. I'll buy some later because Roland sells them, but the, I'm, I know Roland don't want a million dollars for them. So this kit is the way it is when you buy it new. Um... With the rack, it came with this hardware. Um, I still have to adjust this pedal a bit more. I play heel down, and, and uh, I like to spring tension cranked. People get on my kit and they go, holy Christ, that's tight, tight pressure, but that's where I like it. So I actually wear out a lot of springs. I've only broke one in all my years of playing. So, so the snare is a bonus. It's bigger. I love that. Um, this Tom, kind of wish it was a bit bigger, but, and definitely this one, I wish it was the same size as this, but, um, I, I like the configuration. As, and again, I set up single Tom, double floors, ride symbol in here. I love having the ride symbol there. Even when I play bigger kits, I would put another Tom here. This space is always based on the traditional trap kit of tom, snare, floor, and kick, and ride. Always that, my setups. Um, but normally I would put uh, another tom here and move the hi-hat a bit. The rack is quite easy to adjust. 
Um, my regular keys didn't fit it for some reason, but uh, we found the the official rolling key um, because some of the some of the slots or the holes where the uh, key goes in were a bit small and my keys wouldn't fit. I had one vintage. I had one vintage uh, nickel-plated uh, key that actually worked from the 50s. So um, I have no issues with this yet. The sounds are uh, pretty good. They're way better than the one on the other kit. But, I mean, if I run MIDI and trigger software with real drum samples and cymbal samples, both kits do exactly the same same thing. It's really, I can't see you spending big money. Like, like, like some of these kits, man, they're like $5,000. Like, come on. You could buy a hell of a lot of nice drums for $5,000 used. Like, come on. Like, again, I know you're in an apartment, but you really don't need the top-of-the-line electronic kit. I mean, I've been farting around with this one here for a couple of, a couple of days now, maybe. And, uh... I mean, anybody would be happy with this, but I checked online. I was like, I was kind of shocked at what these things go for. This one is definitely more expensive than that. So I didn't pay that. My friend just wanted it out of the house, and n neither him or I knew what the price of these were. So I was a little flabbergasted. So, But it's in a good home. It's going to be used, and it's not going anywhere. I'm a hoarder. So as you can tell, I'm a drum lover. So, what I'm going to do with both kits, I um, don't really know. Um, that one I've played so much now with, uh, uh, you know, my late night practicing that I'm kind of used to it. But this one here, I think um, I'm going to try running into a laptop with my software and uh, seeing how it plays with uh, some drumless tunes and maybe do a video on it. Um, they both have metronomes so you can practice your your all your fun warm-up techniques and stuff and uh, uh, the other one's way simpler than this one to operate but yeah so I still have to read my uh, there's your temples I still have to read my manual on this. Um, the other one is definitely easier. I, I don't know how many kits are in this. I've not read about it. Like I say, I don't know much about these electronics because I was never a fan. Eh? I, I use them as a practice tool. Um, would I like to try this live? Um, I would probably try it live, but... Um, these small size toms, so these two things might be an issue. Um, I would definitely need the other crash because I always play two crashes live, which is no big deal. It was easy to make them, and I'll have one up pretty soon. Um, I'm not buying these. The price of them is stupid. I, I, that's just I can't justify spending the money they want for these damn things, used or new. I like I say, I did my video. I made them. Um, I'm going to try and do a double zone uh, um, symbol uh, so you can basically get this part and the bell, two different zones. It doesn't look that hard to make. So, like I say, I'm not going on world tour with these. These are just for fun in the basement and maybe live. Definitely for band practice with, uh, if I want to jam with some people. The cool thing about it is you take these pads off and this thing folds right up. So, I have to fix the wires yet. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I have to fix the wires and I'm just going to use Velcro straps just to make it nice and neat. I just set this all up, uh, like I say, not long ago. So, I'm still feeling things out. I wasn't sure if I had things plugged in right and stuff. But everything's working perfect right off the bat. Um, this little, I know you can't see under there, but this little piece under here, 
Uh, it doesn't have the anti-movement uh, washer. That's like a rubber, I guess, that came with it. Uh, the guy that I bought off my friend, he, he couldn't find it. So I made one. I uh, made it out of the same rubber as this. And it works fine. So I guess that's a scoop. Um, I'm going to try and play a little bit here and see if my battery power holds out for a few seconds.